So I finally got a shipping notice for the new tank, so I've been busting it all weekend in preparation. So let's check it out. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. I am super stoked to show you guys what I've been working on. We got the light bar set up. Now you guys might remember this from the previous tank. So I did of course reuse this. I do love this design. Uh, it's a waiting for a few more pieces. So the actual tank height is going to be right about where that little pink tape is. Um, so I do have the bracket kind of hidden just below it. And I do have another bracket to install still. So, But I ran out of T-nut so I had to order some more. So the ones on this side are bolts into a stud. So nice and tough. And then I'll probably just use drywall plugs on this side uh, once I get the rest of my little T-nuts. And again, I'll probably put another two down at the bottom just to make sure this thing is super solid. So it's gonna give that nice floaty look. Uh, the light's just kind of floating over the tank. Now, if you guys are wondering how I'm gonna do this, I always get a lot of videos on, or a lot of questions on this. I did previously do a video on the floating light bar, so I will link to that one as well if you guys wanna check it out. Now, another big thing that I have been wanting to do for ages is an auto water change. Um, so what I did is actually ran a little conduit down to the laundry area and ran a bunch of lines today. Now this is like something that's been on my wish list for a long, long time. So really excited for that. Uh, you also might notice the lovely MP60 dry side. So I'm kind of using that to figure out how much of a gap I need behind the tank and the wall. So the tank's gonna be, you know, roughly about there. And then I'll probably just use a couple inch trim board just to hide that little gap, but it'll give me space for the light bar and for the motor. Now looking over here, I do have power around and I got two different kind of power wires in here so I can have two different plug circuits off the one wire and which is going to be good. So I'm probably just going to put some plugs right inside the tank stand. That's going to make wiring stuff up later on really, really easy. Um, so where my light bar is was kind of dictated based on where I can bolt into the stud just because I wanted this to be really solid. So it's going to be probably somewhere mid this trim piece. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Wherever it's centered with the light, this be kind of where it's going to end up. Now, conduit, very important. Um, so this was just a bit of that little black sprinkler piping that you use for drip irrigation and whatnot. But it gave me a nice, easy channel to run my tubes in. Um, so I did run three wires. Now, one of them is going to be for my auto top off. And two wires are going to be, or tubes rather, going to be for an auto water chain. So one to suck water out and one to add it back in. Gave myself lots of extra wire, or tubing rather, so we'll figure out where it's going to go afterwards. Now I also did run a USB cable. So this is a USB-A cable which you can use for the Apex. So if I put a power bar downstairs, I can be able to control stuff with it. And that may come into play with auto water changes and other stuff later. Not 100% sure, but I figured it's easier to run it now. And also did run a network cable. Thanks Derek for making me think of that one. Um, don't even know what the purpose is yet, but if I need to run float switches or power wires or whatever, it gives you that flexibility because there's, you know, those eight pairs or eight wires in there rather. Now, so this has been the other half of the weekend project. There used to be a stacker wa or a side-by-side -side wash and dryer. Changed that to the stacker that we had. This way it freed up this space over here. So I am currently looking into what it will cost to get a couple bins made. Um, ideally some custom ones they fit and if it's too crazy I'll just find something that's pre-made but I want to get some bins roughly that high which will hopefully be somewhere in the 45 to 55 gallon range and there's gonna be two so two rectangle ones one for RODI one for salt water now on top of that it's gonna be just like a little countertop and up here a little kind of hanging rod so you can hang clothes to dry it and then right above there I got my RODI system and check this out come all the way over here we got the other half of that conduit so I got these lines ran down here, so that will be auto water change slash auto top off. And we also got our USB and our network cables. So the network cables is dangling. I don't even know what I'm going to use it for, mainly just future expansion. I did put one of my EB832s down here. Again, don't fully know yet, but I might add some solenoids later. And I can use those to auto flush it or auto turn it on to fill it back up when it's low, something like that. So we'll figure that one out. So I did rewire the RODI a little bit and I changed a few hoses around, a bunch of stuff. So what I did, um, so we got our wash and dry lines down there. Uh, you can't fully see it, but on the back of the washer, I put a Y fitting, basically one of these. Now this one, I kind of buggered this one up, so I got a new one, but it has a compression fitting on it. So essentially 
This is the one I buggered up, but the prior one. So basically one side you can still use regular washer line, the other side you got your little push connector. So that line is what's feeding the RODI system. I had it a valve right here so I can turn it on or off. So I'm going out of town, I don't want to worry about it, easy turn off. Now we also added a few different flush lines. So I rewired this one up. So this one is to flush my membrane. So if I want to run that, it's going to flush out the membrane. If we look on the top here, I got one of these little Y splitters. Now this comes, it's teed off after the carbon filter. So if you put a new carbon in, I can change this one to there and that flushes out the carbon. So when you put a new membrane in, you can burn off all that extra carbon, those particles before your filter. So super easy maintenance. If we come over to the side here, we've got that little Y. So one side of the Y is my regular kind of waistline and the other one is coming from the carbon. So that flushes, comes down here and goes down into the drain. Now if we look at our drain line, we also have this valve. So this is our drain, so the main one flows through and we've got the second valve. Now the second valve is another T, which is right before the DI. So what happens is sometimes we get TDS creep. When you're running your filter, you'll see the number up and after it runs for about a minute, it'll drop down. So this flush valve will let me burn off all the TDS creep and this is gonna vastly improve the life of your DI resin. So tons and tons of flush valves. So right here, your new filter, you can flush it. Want to flush your membrane, we've got that flush. You want to flush pre-DI. So when I first turn it on, they got the flush flap. Now on this one, this is our product water. So this is our output. Currently I have two valves on it. Um, so it just goes into a splitter and two valves. Um, for now, one just goes to a really long hose so that I can manually top stuff off for now. Um, I might leave that or later I might change it to maybe one goes to the auto top off bin, maybe the second one goes to the saltwater bin. We'll see what happens with that one. But pretty soaked how that worked. And since we've got the laundry right here, I just put about a foot of hose down the pipe. So they got lots of it in there. The product one's in there for now just in case so there's no leaks or anything to worry about. But pretty stoked how that turned out so far. So the next big step is just going to be getting the bins. Hopefully I can get some custom made and they're not a fortune to fit in there perfectly and kind of maximize that space. But pretty, pretty stoked to actually we're going to be able to run a conduit down there. It's going to make a huge difference and auto water changes are going to be awesome. So as we walk up the stairs, boom, tank. It's going to look super cool. Um, there's the living room. And up here, so this is finally like the first time it's ever going to be true, fully peninsula mode. So the only one little bit of a challenge is going to be cleaning the glass. Now, the one benefit of the fact that I'm kind of tall, I can almost reach the top corner of the glass up there. So that last little corner might be a bit of a challenge, but the rest of it I think I'll be able to reach. If not, I'll have to make a little something to pull out or stand on or whatever, but it'll be worth it. Now, the, that pink tape is the tank height, so I, it, the brackets are kind of hidden. So you're just going to see that little bit of extruded aluminum over and the rest is floating. In order to save precious time, I've also been pre-cycling the rock. So I have all my rock that was from my scape, you guys probably saw on the deck earlier. Um, so I've been using the Brightwell back Micro to Start XLM. So this has been running in here now for a week or two. Just basically be cycled and ready to roll once the tank comes, which is gonna be perfect. So I do still have a bit left in here, which means I can save a little bit and add it to the tank once it's set up and with everything in it and just make sure it's extra safe when we add the fishies in. I think it's gonna look wicked and I am super excited for it. It's like boom, giant peninsula. Um, now one thing, I did kind of do a video on it. Now most of you might be like, hey Devin, you're crazy. 200 gallons of water on a second floor. Don't worry, I did have it engineered. Figured out the game plan, did some precision ceiling cutting and have a two by six under each here. So it's two two by sixes which are supporting the one side of the header that the joists sit on top of. And we have this here, and this is the other side of the wall. And if you look in there, I can also see another two two by sixes in there. So I have four two by sixes as extra support for that double header that holds the joist to go that way. And it's only about a 10 foot span. So there really isn't that much, and they are running this way. 
So the tank is going to be running along across multiple joists and tons of reinforcement in a short span. So it just makes things really solid. I'm super excited for it. So make sure you guys stay tuned. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button and follow along because there's going to be tons of videos coming along with the updates and progress of this build. I'm super stoked. So I'll catch you guys on the next update.